Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be doing a video teaching you how to configure OBS for streaming and at the same time I'll show you my results for streaming using an i3-8100 plus a GTX 1050Ti so the point of that is to stream using the same PC so that PC i3 plus 1050Ti runs the games and at the same time it's streaming to YouTube or Twitch if you want in this case it will be YouTube so yeah let's get started first of all let's switch to here and as you can see in this is the i3 PC I have my OBS open on my well my browser so first of all I'll show you OBS my camera is not connected to this PC but as you can see in this scene called i3 if you click on the plus here you can add whatever you want if you want to add a webcam just click on video capture device and well it's, it's supposed to be this and you have to select here the webcam and you can capture whatever you want you select the resolution the frame rate all the kind of stuff not really important then here is just status is what i call this right here what's going on this is just text just click on text gti plus and it will open this window you can select the font and just how the text looks very useful i use it all the time then we have screen game which is just screen capture display capture since i was using two displays this was the screen that had the game you just select your display if you have more than one just select it there and then we have cpu usage which was just a screen capture of MSI Afterburner. You do that with window capture. When you click this, you just select what you want to capture. In this case, the window was called MSI Afterburner.exe or .exe. And you just move it how you want. One other thing to keep in mind, I just moved this into here. The webcam was here. You just do this. And you can also just trim these windows if you hold alt then click here you can just trim it as you can see for a webcam it's very easy because if you want to just have your face in there like i have in my video right now you just go here and trim it and then you can scale it by just letting go the alt key oh yeah that's pretty much the basic of obs and then in the settings what I'm using in general, nothing here, nothing important in streaming. Here is where you're going to stream. If you're going to stream to Twitch, just click Twitch, put your stream key. The stream key is a code that they give you in the dashboard. You just paste it here. Don't let anybody know your stream key. If they do, they will be able to stream to your YouTube account or Twitch account, but you can reset it on the dashboard. Then on the output, this is the most important part. By default, it's on simple. Put it on advanced. Advanced is much better, in my opinion. And here is the encoder. So the encoder is what will be used, the method to do the stream, to encode it. We have the NVIDIA encoder, which is this one, and X264. This will use the GPU to help to have lower CPU usage. It's very, very useful. It's 100% necessary in our case. And here X264 will use the CPU, which will be catastrophic on an i3-8100. Just stick to the NVIDIA encoder. Here you can rescale the output if you want to do a lower resolution. For some reason, maybe you don't want to do 1080p. Here the rate control. You have CBR, BBR. Well, CBR is constant bitrate. BBR is, is variable bitrate. I usually just keep this last default as here. Bitrate, this is very important, is how pretty much the quality of the stream. If this is very low, it will look very blocky. If it's very high, it will look much sharper, much sharper, sorry. The keyframe interval is two. And it's, this also depends on your connection. This is what I was going to show you right now. Go into speedtest.net, run the test. We'll let it run in the meantime. But yeah, just run that option. The download doesn't matter in this case, we only care about the upload speed. While that runs, I'll explain you more stuff. 
So keyframe interval on two, that's what YouTube recommends. So I kept it that way. You have presets here, high quality, high performance, Blu-ray, low latency. I don't really use any of this. I just keep it on default and it works. But I'll leave some tutorials down in the description from a YouTuber. I really like how he explains OBS. Then profile main, because YouTube says so. Level, I keep it on auto. GPU on zero, because we only have one GPU. And B frames on two. I've seen many different videos talking about B frames and none of them was consistent in a way that in some video they say put it on zero on other days on others they say use two I just kept it on two like on default and well here's the test as you can see the upload is 26.39 megabits per second that means that I can put here like 26,000 or 25,000 on bitrate yeah I have a very good internet connection in my country so I can do that, but uh, I mean, YouTube has a limit of around nine megabits per second of bitrate. So I just recommend keep it on whatever your connection is. If your upload is 6.39 megabits per second, just as an example, you should be able to get away with 6,000. But if it's a little laggy, maybe try 5,000. That's usually a good option. Just try it out and see how it goes. Then if you want to record, you have this option, use the stream encoder, rescale the output, typical stuff. Then here I don't really touch anything at all, so I kept it as default. This I kept it as default as well, as you can see. My microphone is not connected. And here, this is video, the base resolution, the output resolution. If you want to do 720p, for example, I recommend changing that here, put 720. Then on the downscale filter, I kept it as default by cubic. On the FPS values, you have 60, 30, whatever you want. I recommend usually in this case using 30. 30 should be better for the well, all the stream. It will be easier for the PC to process 30 frames per second compared to 60. It's double the frame rate. And well, if, if a game is very CPU heavy, maybe try 720p here. Then you have hotkeys if you want to use them, very useful stuff for to start streaming, to stop, many things. I don't use any. And then on advanced, some people use this on high. Personally, normal was, I don't know, it worked, so I kept it that way. I didn't change anything else here. I recommend watching some extra tutorials for that if you want to be more efficient. But these were the settings I used in the stream, this like this. This on 1080, 30 frames per second, output on 6000, CBR, two keyframe intervals, 1080p. Here are my stream key, all the stuff. And that's pretty much the OBS configuration. We can close this. So, well, I made this stream just today, as you can see. Today I made this one. I'll zoom in. So this was one hour and a half. This was a private live stream. So as you can see, streamed August 28th at 11.14. Unfortunately, this two right here, I had a problem with my internet connection. The ISP just cut my internet every five minutes. I couldn't stream properly. It was crashing all the time, the internet, so I couldn't stream properly. And since I was very afraid of that happening again, I did a private live stream. That means that the live stream was done like a normal live stream, but without the audience, because it was on private. Nobody was watching, but the stream was happening. So I have an hour and a half of gameplay while streaming, talking to myself <laughs> an hour and a half. So as you'll see here, I was testing, I tested PUBG. I also tested Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, 720p live streaming on Siege, CSGO. So this was with the settings I show you right now on OBS. There is a link to this live stream down in the description if you're interested in checking it out, the quality, all that kind of stuff to see what results you should get. The internet this time around was working. So I was able to do an hour and a half of complete stable streaming. Some final thoughts. If you're just capturing the game, I'm not a 
and not a webcam or anything like that, just the display in the game. The CPU usage should be lower because you're doing less stuff on the stream. OBS has to process less things. It will be just a display capture. I usually like to have on another screen my browser running with the stream at 144p so I can see how the stream is doing and all the kind of stuff, plus read the chat at the same time. If you don't have two screens, that's fine. You can monitor your own stream using the YouTube app on your phone. So just enter to your own stream on the phone. You can see how the stream is doing, read the chat. Really useful to read comments while you are in the game if you only have one screen. If you have two screens, in my opinion, it's much better since multitasking is way easier. You can change stuff on OBS very fast. And I also recommend running all games on borderless full screen or full screen windowed. That's because if you have to change something on OBS, it will be much easier to minimize the game and jump into the other program if you have to change something or just check the status of the stream. Another very important thing that I recommend you to do if you're using this to live stream. In all these games, I was capping the game at 60 frames per second, excepting on CSGO. That's because the higher the frame rate, the higher the CPU usage. So by limiting the frame rate, you're making your CPU do less work. And the CPU here is doing the live stream plus running the game, which is a ton of work to do. And we only have four cores. On lighter games like CSGO, you can go over 60 frames per second without much of a problem. But on Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite, PUBG, all that kind of stuff, you need as much CPU power as possible. And those games already use a big part of our CPUs. So yeah, those are my recommendations. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial and see you next time.